Welcome back to Stray Trains. In this video we will take a look at a topic that has had quite a lot of questions in the comments on this channel. A topic that looks quite complicated but is somewhat quite simple in its nature. The Train Describer or TD system for Metro Trains in Victoria. Hope you enjoy the video. So let's start off with what exactly is a TD? Sometimes known as a TDN or a run number as well, a TD is a four digit code that is unique to every run that a train does on a day. Generally it is four numbers but it can also have a letter in it. Every time a train runs empty with passengers or to or from a yard, it will have a unique TD number. The TD number is determined by a set of rules and is therefore not a random code assigned for each service. No TD can be the same in a day. That means that at the beginning of every run, the driver puts in a unique code to the train as part of their preparation before actually driving it. The TD is merely just a number. So, for instance, if the driver has to stop at a station due to operational requirements, or the service needs to run express to a station, or some alteration needs to be made, the driver has full control over the train and does not need to necessarily change the TD number, though this does depend on the situation. Now, as part of the explanation, we're going to group certain lines slightly differently for simplicity purposes. Here is a very basic version of the metro map. Yes, yeah, sorry, my artistic skills aren't the best, but all the relevant stations are included here in this map. We're going to group the lines as follows. Hurstbridge and Mernda lines will remain the same, as that is part of the Clifton Hill group, and the same will apply for the Burnley group, being the Belgrave, Lilydale, Alvain and Glen Waverley lines, plus the Sandringham and Flemington Racecourse lines will also remain the same. Now, we're going to group the Frankston line with the Pakenham and Cranbourne lines, which we'll just name the Caulfield group. We're going to take the Sunbury line away from the Upfield and Craigieburn lines and place it with the Werribee and Williamstown lines, devising the names Northern Group and Footscray Group, respectively. The Stony Point line will remain grey for now, but we'll touch on that a little bit later. So, here is our new coloured map. The first placement in the four-digit TD code is location-based and will correlate with this map. If the TD starts with a 1, it will be a Clifton Hill service. If the TD starts with a 2, it will be a Ringwood service, that's either the Belgrave or Lilydale lines. A 3, either Alamein or Glen Waverley, so we'll just simplify the Burnley group to 2 or 3. If the TD starts with a 4, it is a Caulfield line service. 5 will be a Northern group. 6 will be a service through Footscray, that's to either Werribee, Williamstown or Sunbury. If the TD starts with an R, it is a service to either Showgrounds or Flemington Racecourse. And if it starts with an X, it is a Sandringham line service. And there is actually one extra exception to that. When there is the Newport Williamstown shuttles, that's generally after the peak PM at night or in the early morning on weekends, the TD will also start with an X. Docks from or shunts to a yard also have a very similar principle. For instance, a shunt to either Sandringham or Brighton Beach Yards on the Sandringham line will also start with an X. And a revenue service, which will also start with an X, will be only on the Sandringham line, with the exception of the Newport Williamstown shuttles. Nevertheless, despite being operated by Metro Trains Melbourne, the Stony Point line is not an electrified line and is ran by V-lines of diesel trains known as sprinters. Stony Point services begin with the number 8 in their TD. However, this is not to signal the Stony Point line or V-line sprinters per se, just to really, I guess, signify that it's not an electric train. As non-electric trains, whether they be services, light engine movements or goods trains, all have a TD that will begin with 0, 8 or 9. Movements between states have a completely different system, but this will have to be covered in an entirely different video. Maybe a part 2 to this video, wink wink. Anyway, so to make things easy, let's just say Stony Point Services have a TD that begins with an 8. The second placement in a TD refers to if a service is running via the loop or not. If a service is running via the loop, the digit will be either a 6, 7, 8 or 9. If it is not, the second digit will range from 0 to 5. A great example of this is if a train is not running all the way to the city, as the service cannot therefore run by the loop, it has to have a 0 to 5 in this digit place. 
For instance, when the Cranbourne line originates and terminates at Dandenong at night, the second digit is always a 0 to 5 here, despite the rest of the day having a 6 or above because the train will generally run via the loop towards the city from Cranbourne. The third placement is really an extension of the fourth, so we'll just go straight to the fourth placement, which is always a number. If the last digit of a TD is even, it means it is an up train and therefore travelling towards the city. And if the last digit of a TD is odd, the train is a down service and travelling away from the city. Note that an even number will apply even if the train does not run all the way to the city. As we see here, for instance, this comment is running only as far as Dandenong, but still in the city direction, meaning it is an up service and therefore has an even TD. Essentially, we know three facts about a service by knowing its TD. Firstly, which group of lines it is travelling on, if it is travelling via the loop, and which direction of travel. Take TD1234 for example. What do we know? I'll give you a couple of seconds to think, but feel free to pause the video. Answers coming now. Well, we know it must be a Clifton Hill group service because it starts with the number one. It is running direct to Flinders Street because it has the number two, which is zero to five in the second slot. And it has to be an up service because it is an even number. In fact, this is the actual TD of the 7.01 AM Limited Express Flinders Street direct service originating from Hurstbridge. Tick, tick, and tick. Wait, hang on. Did you notice just before that the TD there started with a seven? Well, there was one final starting number that we didn't mention before. Essentially, if a TD starts with a 7, it is an additional run in some sense. It may be a timetabled additional run, but it could be unplanned. Say, for instance, for footy games, if you see a Richmond-bound service, you know that it will be an extra train or extra service, and therefore the TD will start with a 7. Similarly, the clip before was a project run, and therefore not a typically timetabled service. It also started with a 7, but we'll stay away from that now as... TDs to start with a 7 are really a whole other ball game. We will now look at a few more interesting scenarios and how the TD principle is applied. Quite often on the Cross City Group, a train will run from Frankston all the way to either Laverton, Werribee or Williamstown via Flinders Street. But there are two areas of conflict here you may notice. Firstly, a Frankston service will start with a 4, whereas a service that runs to Laverton, Werribee or Williamstown will start with a 6. Well, that is from Flinders Street, it will always start with a 6. Additionally, once the train arrives at Flinders Street, it is no longer an up train and therefore will become a down train. In this case, a new TD is applied at Flinders Street, so that means from Frankston to Flinders Street, you've got one TD, and then from, for instance, Flinders Street to Werribee, you'll have a separate TD. Another scenario is, how are the TDs applied in the loop? Say you're at platform 3 in the loop, at 8am on a Monday morning, which is where the upfield Craigieburn and Sunbury line uses, trains will always be running in the up direction. And if you return home from work at about 5pm, trains are now running in the down direction. Well, the same thing applies here. As a general rule of thumb, when trains run through Flinders Street, their TD will change. So think of Flinders Street like the apex of a pyramid. Once trains hit the top of it, they will switch double directions and must have a TD change. One last scenario we will look at is what happens when there are service alterations and their effect on TDs. This is planned or unplanned. Let's say there's a planned disruption between Flinders Street and Epping. Trains will therefore originate at Epping. The TD will remain for up services as all up Mernda services going to Epping or Flinders Street, well, they won't be running via the loop. However, what happens when there is a murder service originated in Epping? Typically, murder services run via the loop, but in this scenario, they don't because they originate at Epping. Well, because they don't run via the loop, the TD will have to change and dep depends what it changes to, but the one thing that will change is the second digit will have to now be a 0 to 5. Now, when there's unplanned delays and whatnot, things can become well, pretty random in a sense. It really all just depends on what happens. Sometimes services will be severely delayed. Sometimes a train was about to run one service and then it gets transposed to run another, so in that case the driver will just put in a different TD. 
but sometimes after delays just to get a service to the some suburban destination metro might run an extra service in this case it will likely start with a seven so during delays things can become very confusing for just about everyone and not just the public so yes the world of tds is oddly paradoxically confusing and simple in a sense hope you've learned a thing or two about the tds and the operation of the td system and i think we'll leave it at that cheers